let me let me begin by welcoming everyone who is here this glorious morning uh, first those who have joined us online from nations of the earth uh, through any of our social media platforms or any of our satellite stations I'm so happy to have you if you are joining online, I want you to share this video so that others can become a part of what God is doing. Then everyone who is present, I'm very certain that this is your day of visitation. Yeah. We had a very great time in Esut. I was in Esut on Thursday, on Friday, and on Saturday. We had great harvest of souls. And I have some of my children that came from there. In fact, we'll be putting buses in a suite every week. Where are they? Make a shout. Uh, if, if they tell people sitting down, if they tell you to get up, you get up immediately. Whatever they tell you to do, you obey. Because these ones are the owners of the house. They are the last ones now. Amen. So we are going to be giving you guys buses every week. We want to do something, and also I want to roll out some of our buses for those who, are, who may find it difficult to be able to come. So by 8.30 every day also, we will have a bus station at Amit Road, Amit Junction, Amit Bus Stop, 8.30 every day. That bus will take people from that place and bring people to that place uh, for the second service on daily basis. We are also looking at uh, some other places we are going to do these buses. We are looking for a place in Owani, uh, Charale, uh, that will also be a converging point. Mm. But now we have a suit, going to be giving them about a couple of buses, and then that Amateur Road. Praise the Lord. So, 8.30, wait for us in Amateur Bus Stop. We won't, we'll be there before 8.30. We'll carry you. Uh, from that place, 8.30, if there are many more persons there, we will make the bus two or three as much as we can. We have a couple of buses, actually, that we can use to get this. We want to see how we can also assist people who are coming from a little far places to be able to lift them and make it easy for them. Praise the Lord. I started working on a very integral uh, topic, team that says dealing with evil family patterns dealing with evil family patterns and satanic stronghold people have asked the question is it possible that a child of God can go through family patterns the answer is yes because even though redemption is a complete package not everyone enjoy the complete package of redemption not everyone so a child of God can give his life to Christ and yet be afflicted if he has not intentionally, intentionally dealt with certain evil family patterns that have replicated itself over the years in that family. I showed us a couple of patterns in the scriptures that were seen in Abraham and all of that. I began by showing us what we can do to deal with these evil family patterns. One of the things to be done to deal with evil family pattern is mercy. Cry out for mercy. You must know that these evil family patterns came into being as a result of a hedge that was broken in the time past. So this hedge was broken as a result of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are no tall sinners. Every sinner is short. Either short of glory, short of testimonies, short of divine wonders, short of elevation. But every sinner is short. So the first thing to do is to cry out to God for mercy. The second thing to do is what I term priestly legislation. Priestly legislation. When I talk about priestly legislation, I'm simply talking about intercession. I'm simply talking about intercession. 
Now, let me say this. We live under the new covenant of God and it is integral to understand that in this new covenant, every child of God is a priest. In the book of Matthew chapter 25, verse number 50 to 51, we saw that after Jesus died, the curtain of the temple was torn hither and thither. Prior to this time, the high priest we are allowed to enter the holiest of all, only once in a year, not even the priest, the high priest. So after the death of Jesus, the curtain of the temple was torn, meaning that God has given us access to the holiest of all. That's why the Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to receive help in times of need. So every believer now has access to the holy place. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 5 and verse number 9, we see that we are a chosen people. We are a royal priesthood called out that we might show forth the glory of him who has, in, who has delivered us from darkness and enlisted us into the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light, sorry. In the book of Revelation also, chapter 1, verse number 5 to 6, pull it up, Revelation chapter 1, Verse number 5 to 6. We saw that we were purged. We were delivered by the blood of Jesus. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Look at verse number 6. Why did he do this? He didn't just wash us. He did this and made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So we were raised by God to become priests and kings. The priestly ministry of the believer is the one that deals with God directly. That's the vertical relationship. The priestly minister of the believer deals with God. That's the vertical relationship. The kingly ministry of the believer is the one that deals with man. That's horizontal relationship. Now, the kingly ministry of the believer is the one that gives the believer earth dominion. That is the likeness of God. The priestly ministry is the one that gives the believer a relationship with God. That's the one that is quintessential to making heaven. That is the image of God. We are created in the both, both image and likeness. Image is resemblance. Likeness is functionality. So God created us so we can look like him and then act like him. So we have established that every believer is a priest. Every believer is a priest. Every child of God is a priest. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 13. When I read this place, I shuddered. The Bible says, I saw a man from among them who would make up a wall. That's the Hebrew transliteration of making up a hedge. And stand in the guard before me. On behalf of the land that I should not destroy it but I found none look at what happened when God could not find anyone any intercessor verse number 31 became the mishap that that generation suffered as a result of the absence of an intercessor therefore I have poured out my indignation on them I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath and I have recompensed their deeds on their own head says the Lord so because he could not find an intercessor, destruction came upon them. Prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Prayer is not overcoming the reluctance of God, but prayer is laying hold of God's highest willingness. If the Lord can find just one person who would seek his face, the tide of events, can be turned around. However, we see from the scripture that when no one steps forward, terrible things happen. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse number 1, that's one of the scriptures also that shook me also. 
The Bible says, run to and fro the streets of Jerusalem. See now and know. And seek in her open places. If you can find one man. If there is anyone who executes judgment. Who seeks the truth. He said, and I will pardon her. New Living Translation. If you can find one person. Run up and down every street in Jerusalem, says the Lord. Look high and low. Search throughout the city. If you can find even one just and honest person, I will not destroy the city. That city was a city of hundreds of thousands of people, and yet not one soul could be found. Does it mean there were no people in that place? When God said, I sought for a man who would stand in the gap and make up the hedge, does it mean that there was no man? There were men, but a lot of them were not standing before God. They were standing before their businesses before their ambitions what does it mean to stand in the gap to stand in the gap means to expose oneself for the protection of something so prayer shapes both history and destiny prayer changes both times and seasons the book of daniel chapter 9 and verse number 1 to 2 the bible chronicles an eventful a uh, thing that happened prior to that time it was recorded in the book of jeremiah but before jeremiah was able to record it the lord had told his servant that the children of israel would go into captivity and this captivity would last for certain number of years that when so 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 years was expired they would come out of captivity but lo and behold when the captivity was supposed to expire, then we are still in the captivity. Until Daniel was studying the book of Jeremiah. And he found out that the time given for Israel to come out of captivity at their last. The Bible says he now faced the wall and began to intercede. By that interse inter intercession, he brought about the enforcement of God's prophetic ordinance. Anytime God will enforce his will on earth, he raises intercessors. Wherever God sees an intercessor, he releases a blessing. Why kings have not risen in your family is because priests have not risen. Because the ministry of priesthood must go forth before the kingly ministry. God must have secured someone that can secure the blessing before he pours out the blessing. Now when we talk about the ministry of the priesthood, we are not talking about ordained priests. There must not be a pastors as names. We are talking about people who have assumed their place in the place of prayer. Who understand their role in legislation as touching spiritual matters. It might be an old woman. It might be an old man. It might be a young child. But this person keep on going to God on behalf of a family. God through this person will route a change such as has never been seen before. When God finds one man that can pray, he has found an asset. When God finds an intercessor, he has found a weapon. What are the misunderstandings about prayer? Number one, there are those for whom prayer is a mere religious obligation. They know before you sleep, you just have to pray. You just have to 12 a.m. You just maybe take your tablet and do that. Or you just kneel down and it's an obligation. So they don't know the spiritual impact of prayer. Number two, there are those who rely on others to pray for them. I want to say this. Prayer is a non-transferable obligation. Prayer is a non-transferable responsibility. Prayer is a non-delegable responsibility. Yes, people can pray for you, but make sure you have a robust prayer life. Make sure you have a robust prayer life. The third misunderstanding of prayer, there are those for whom prayer is something to do when there is a problem. So anytime there is no problem, they stop praying. When there are problems, they begin to pray. And that's why their answers delay. But you can have a prayer account that before any problem arises, you have robust prayer life that has the capacity to swallow the challenge. 
then what is prayer number one prayer is the instrument of developing intimacy with the almighty the first purpose of prayer is to develop intimacy with god genesis chapter 19 and verse number 27 genesis 19 and verse number 27 and abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before god that is he had cultivated that attitude of standing before god the place of prayer is the place of the irrigation of the connection between divinity and humanity it is a place we irrigate our fellowship with god number two prayer is the catalyst for the discovery of god's will Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3 Call me and I will answer And show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not So prayer is the instrument of discovering God's will As taught in your life Habakkuk chapter 2 verse number 1 I will stand on my watch tower And I will wait to hear what the Lord will say And what I will answer when God reproves me Somebody say amen Somebody say amen So prayer is an instrument of answer Prayer is an instrument of discovery of God's will. Number three, prayer helps us to align with the will, the plan, and the purpose of God concerning our lives. In the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse number 40 to 42, Jesus was about embarking on the greatest assignment of his life. This was why he came to the earth. This was why divinity put on humanity to operate on earth. And then to do this solemn task, he was in the particular field, the Garden of Gethsemane. And then he prayed until the fashion of his countenance changed. There is this change about a praying man. A praying man cannot be the same. There is no better yesterday with a man that can pray. As he prayed, the Bible said that the sweat on his body became as thick as blood. What was he praying? He said, let your will be done. So prayer is the instrument for aligning ourselves to the will of God. Remember that the first thing that happened, he said, if it is your will, let this cup pass over me. Of course, you know, it wasn't Christ that spoke. It was Jesus. Hmm. What did I say? It wasn't Christ. Who spoke? Somebody saying, what is he saying? What is the difference between Jesus and Christ? In biology, at any time a zygote must come, there must be 23 chromosomes from the mother, 23 from the father. In terms of Jesus, the mother contributed 23 chromosomes and was asking the angel of the Lord or the angel, Gabriel, that came, what happens? You say, I will not know any man. The angel said that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. That is, the Holy Ghost will bring about the other 23 chromosomes. So anytime you read the scripture, you must understand that Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. That part of humanity gave him entry to the earth because he had to put on the flesh to be able to exist in the existential realm of man. So now, anytime you read the scripture and there are speakings, know from which part that spoke. Because the maternal part of Jesus is Jesus. That's why up until tomorrow there are people answering Jesus. But there is a paternal side called Christ. Now, Jesus is the garment that Christ wore to operate. Come, sir. Come. Take off your suit. Jesus is the garment that Christ wore to operate. Because the only legality for operating on earth, bring it, bring it. The only legality for operating on earth, now he had been wearing this. This is Christ. This is Jesus. He had to wear this to have a legal means of operating on earth. Can you wait? So Jesus is the ordination, or Christ is the ordination of Jesus. Hmm. What did I say? You see it. Christ had to put on humanity. Immortality had to put on mortality so that mortality can put on immortality. But look 
at this, we didn't just put on immortality. Immortality swallowed us. Immortality swallowed us. But mortality could not swallow Jesus. So when you read in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus saying, if it is possible, let this cup pass over me. It wasn't Christ. It was the maternal side. But then all of a sudden, the paternal side, Christ said, not his will, not our will, but your will, we have to die. When you read Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabbatan, it was the maternal side speaking. It wasn't Christ. Why did he die? The sinless God died. That a sinful man might become a sinless God. So the immortality of God put on the mortality of man. That the mortality of man might be swallowed up in the mortality of God. Thank you, sir. Number four, prayer is the instrument of enforcing the will, the plan, and the purpose of God. I, I read for all Daniel chapter 9, verse number 2 to 3. I cannot have it. I explained it. Let me read it. Daniel chapter 9, verse number 2 to verse 3, quickly. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books. Please help me so that this doesn't harm. I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations, that is, captivity of Jerusalem. Then I set my face towards the Lord. When he knew that the time had come, he set his face towards the Lord to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth. Sir, how bad do you need a miracle? Someone can travel from here to Ijabode, travel from here to the far west just to do charm against you. But you can't travel from your bed to the floor to pray. Just to kneel down on your bed, you can't. If you know what these evil people do to keep us bound, the level of sacrifices they make. You can't, you can't. These people sponsor altars that fight for them. What is on the altar for you that has spoken for you? Jesus asked, what has he done for us? How bad do you need the miracle? Yes, you have been believing God for marital breakthrough. What are you willing to do for it? What are you willing to do to break free from the cocoons of darkness? How far can you go to be free? I'm not talking about turning and going from one place to the other. What are the prices you are willing to pay? I'm not talking about hiring prayer contractors. I am a priest, but I can tell you, the most, <laughs> anytime a man is sick, he does not give another person medicine to take. Prayer people pray for you can never sustain your freedom. You didn't hear it. The freedom can come back to sustain it. The capacity to sustain it. The Bible says when the enemy shall come up against you like a flood, the Holy Ghost shall raise a standard from within you. That standard is not without. You must dig your own well. You must have a walk with the Holy Spirit. If you must sustain your deliverance, you must sustain a robust spiritual life. I... A robust spiritual life. Prayer, you can't delegate prayer. See a lot of ministers... That have prayer team and they don't pray. You don't delegate prayer. Nobody can pray for you. Yes, they can. But what I mean, the effectiveness of your victory will come from you. The, the challenge you have is you think you have to be a certain way to pray. Or you have to pray for like three hours, six hours. You can sincerely go to God on daily basis. One hour, 45 minutes. But you are serious about this. You have a time. Yes, you are free. You have weaknesses. 
You know, what takes us away from the place of prayer is our weakness, right? Am I talking to somebody here? Have you knelt down before and you want to pray? The devil says, oh, yeah, get up, get up. Have you forgotten you did this? But God showed us in the scripture that our weakness should bring us to the throne of grace. Can I show you? He said that when you should even come to the throne of grace, it's not when you are perfect. That time you are not perfect. He said, come the way you are. Hebrews 4, 16. So maybe you've committed a sin and you don't feel like praying in the midnight. That's even when God is looking for you. He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. This guy obtaining mercy has sinned, has done something. Then when we have obtained mercy, we will find grace to help in time of need. This guy went on sackcloth. He went on fastings and prayer. In the book of Matthew 17 verse 21, the Bible said, This kind goeth not out except by prayer and fasting. Let me ask you to listen. Don't deceive yourself. That's when you do in the night, wake up in the night and put worship song. And listen to worship song from 1 to 3. You have not done anything. Wrong. It's good. It's a starting point. Don't think that worship replaces prayer. It's a misconception that will drag you down. Jesus was teaching them to pray. He said, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. There is a place of praise and worship. Except the Lord gave you specific instruction to worship in a season. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But there is a place of give us this day. There is a place of intercession and supplication. After you have worshipped, you now need to tell God what you want him to do. Worship song is powerful. It creates the atmosphere. But the time comes when you need to offer it. And then worship with your own mouth. Sing unto God. It doesn't listen to the voice. Worship flows from the heart. It flows from the heart. Out of our power shall flow issues of life. And when you are done, you need to make requests. This is where we miss it. When we are done praising the Lord, you get straight into telling God what you want Him to do. That's why your prayer has been delayed. You don't pray for yourself first. You pray for others. Intercession is when you pray for others. Supplication is when you pray for yourself. Intercession must go up first before supplication can receive favorable reply. We are coming to that. What is prayer? Number five. Prayer helps us to take delivery of divine inheritance and access to God's provision. Matthew 6 and verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Number six. Prayer is a weapon for intercepting and destroying the enemy's agenda. Jeremiah 1 verse number 10. Jeremiah 1 10. Prayer is a weapon for intercepting and destroying the enemy's agenda. I have set this day. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Number seven, prayer facilitates divine interventions. Prayer facilitates divine interventions. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12 and verse number 1, the scripture chronicles the story of Herod who stretched forth his hand and took James, the brother of John, and killed him. When he took James, the church could do nothing. The church could do nothing. They kept quiet. He proceeded also and then he went and apprehended Peter. But when he took Peter to kill Peter, the church rose in prayer. The Bible said that prayer was offered ceaselessly for Peter. Look at this. Peter was therefore kept in prison. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. As a result of this constant prayer, look at what happened in verse 6. There was an instant divine intervention. When Herod would have killed him, the Lord sent an angel that brought about his deliverance. Number 8. Prayer destroys demonic strongholds and expels darkness. Matthew 17 and verse number 21. Matthew 17, 21. 
Now there are different types of prayer, but I'm going to focus on number one, intercession. There are different types of prayer, I'm going to focus on intercession. When we talk about intercession, we are talking about the sacrifice of personal concern and need to lift others before the presence of God. So to intercede is to be Christ-like. Because the Bible told us that the first intercessor is Christ. Hebrews 7.25 He lives to make intercession for us. Intercession is selfless prayer. It is a kind of prayer where self is not the focus. Intercession by man provokes intervention from God. Both for the intercessor and the person being interceded for. Intercession by man provokes intervention from God both for the intercessor and the person that is being interceded for. Now look up. There are five fingers of intercession. How many fingers of intercession? There are five fingers of intercession. Look up here. You have the thumb finger. This is the finger closest to you. If you want to pray, the first thing to do is to pray for those close to you. Pray for your family, pray for those close to you, your friends, those close to you, not yourself yet. Number two, you have the index finger. You have the index finger. The index finger, this is a finger that shows the way. It's a finger that instructs, it's a finger that warns. So you need to pray for your priest, your pastor. You need to pray for those the Lord has put over you, your mentors. This is the finger that instructs. Paul was writing, he said, pray for us. The third finger is the tallest finger. This is praying for your leaders. I know a lot of people will not want to pray for Buhari, but you have no option than to. For Tinibu, for Nayuku Tinibu. You have no option than to. You have a duty. You have a spiritual responsibility to pray for your leaders. Yes, that's what the scripture says. The fourth one is the weakest of the finger. That is the ring finger. The weakest of the finger is praying for those that are weak, those in the hospital. Are there those you know? You can just pray for people in UNTA, pray for people in Parkland, pray for people in different hospitals. It might shock you how powerful that prayer can be. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 5 and verse number 16 that the effective fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. The, the fifth finger is the smallest. This is you. So you see how it goes. But what do we do? When it's time to pray, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus in Jesus' name, I rock of you, brother. Find in the name of Jesus, I thank you in Jesus' name, I prayed, oh Lord, ah, Makanda, Mama, Mama. You are done. If your son thanks you like that, will you be fine? Find in the name of Jesus, I thank you in Jesus' name. You don't even know what you are calling God. My first time of going to adoration, several years ago, I think in 2001, the man of God does he say, face somebody by your side and pray to God. The man holding me. And you know, adoration ushers are not quiet. There are a kind of laugh you will laugh. They will beat you. It's not a joke. They have prison. How they wake people up in, up in sleep is now they pour a bucket of water on you. It's not, where you are staying, they will pour a bucket of water. Pour another one. If you wake up in anger, you will see people that say like this. Their hearts are like this. They will be watching you. <laughs> Good morning, sirs. The woman held my hand. I started calling God names. See, Jesus. I said, ah. I said, I said, I I said, I said, I as she was saying that, she said, Jesus, by your kind of I go slow the nose. <laughs> I didn't know when I started laughing. <laughs> How can you pray with somebody like that? Mani on asebo zam 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 tine ke na zanu moku. Onye kere li gweno wa zamo. Oh, what you rose on the lazamo. 
Oboni zagi monye gazamo chuku Zam 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 chineke na zanu moku Onye kereli weno wazamo Amu waturu zamile zamo Oboni zagi monye gazamo chuku so the fifth finger is the smallest this is you you now see we have made this one a priority we take two seconds to thank god in one minute we are done thanking him we now open prayer bulletin we have to pray 100 prayer points between 12 to 4 and you are wondering why you are oppressed you couldn't even host god you can hide and there is only one instrument that hosts him that is worship that's why the lord's prayer began with worship our father who art in heaven do you know what our lord praise is is a sacred praise is a praise you give to god and you don't remember the badness of satan you only see the goodness of the lord the bible said jesus told them let us go through a place called the gatherings there was a man there often time he was bound with fetters he would tear it down and then the disciples said no one has gone through that place jesus said let's go as jesus was coming to that place the man ran to him every one of the disciples ran away and he came and then he bowed down to jesus remember a demon possessed person legion is what it's called Literally six thousand demons in one man. That's how much a man can carry. That's the depth of a man's spirit. Six thousand demons. He bowed down to Jesus. As he bowed down to Jesus, he worshipped. What would have become a deliverance became a discussion. He told Jesus, "I know you are here to cast me out, but I have a request. I don't want to go to abyss. Cast me into this place." Because he worshipped, he knew that any time God is worshipped, requests are granted. So God said to the devil, your request is granted. The question is, if God can grant the request of the devil because of worship, how much more when the righteous worships? You tell God how beautiful. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Please take it up and play since i found it in a friend so kind and true let me tell you how he changed my life completely he has done what no other friend could do no one ever cares for me like jesus there is no friend so kind like he. No one else could take my sins and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. I'm the little boy that lost, she lost in sin and guilt. On what yet you for your love, pour your love on me. Hey, I was naked and cold. Oh, I need a covering fashion to your face. Yes, you have dressed me in your righteousness alone. Look past my sin, I took my shame and pour your love on me. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame. I pour your love. Somebody say it now. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. See only what oh, I mean, one that you have shown. Show me 
until you have worshipped. Don't pray until he has eaten your praise. It is this time that God stepped out of his eternity. What he does is that he, he doesn't even wait for your prayer. He looks in your life and begins to approach reproach. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. As I look around, I see it's a new day. Testimonies of yesterday, they give me faith for tomorrow. I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I thank you for where I am today. I see you doing a new walk in my life, oh, Lord, I praise you for the future I see. Lord, I praise you for the future I see. Let me put in our hands this keys. This is a very important thing I can't leave in the fewest of the minute how do you grow in intercession number one grow in intimacy with god grow in intimacy with god the closer to god you are the more robust your intercessory life will be number two grow in the knowledge of god's word grow in the knowledge of god's word be equipped Grow in the knowledge of his word. Number three, grow in your compassion for others. If you are compassionate enough, you will pray for people. The Bible says when Jesus saw them, his heart was moved with compassion. Number four, grow in your worship life. I told us don't raise supplication until you have ensure that your prayer order is already prepared through worship number five is grow in sacrifice can i ask you a question you are used to giving to the lord as touching your need have you ever made a sacrifice as touching someone else's need you see what this person is going through and then you make a sacrifice and say father on behalf of this person i want to sow this seed the person may not be aware you don't need to tell the person on behalf of this person, I make this sacrifice. On behalf of this person, I set apart time in prayers. I set apart time in fasting. I am giving to you this. Answer this prayer. And don't go about announcing it. Don't go about telling people you are praying for them. You have already lost your reward in doing that. Needed in this final hour are men and women who can pray. Swallow your pride, though, and come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know, in your son is the key to eternal life. Swallow your pride and come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know, in your son is the key to eternal life. How can you run oh, when you don't know the ways of the spirit? Rise to your feet. How can you fly like the eagle when you don't know the way? I lead to him, I lead to them. When you don't know the ways of the spirit, how can you run? When you don't know the ways of the Spirit